Righto team, look what showed up today. We've got ourselves the Royal Enfield Hunter 350 to play with. Um, so this was dropped off technically yesterday, but this is the first chance I've had to get out on it. It's Royal Enfield's new um, small bore, kind of sporty bike. It's got 17 inch rims, with the vibrate calipers. Uh, it's got the same engine as the Meteor and the Classic 350, so it's a nice tall Kiwi motor, but it's a much lighter chassis overall. And Royal Enfield has sort of restyled it to look almost like a classic British sort of cafe bike, a uh, traditional roadster. Um, so you've got your Classic 350, which leans heavily on that old style pre-war uh, motorcycle and this is a lot more modern looking uh, so yeah we're gonna go out for a quick ride um, so far so good it's a very very new bike it's only got 170 K's on it but I've ridden it the length of this street here <laughs> uh, just to sit next to what's left of a tree after Cyclone Gabriel nice pillion and grab handles the saddles nice and comfy there we go, 172.3 kilometres. So, right, turn on that camera. Bang! Hopefully that's synced now. So, like always, beautiful, easy to use clutch on this bike. Uh, handlebars quite narrow. Uh, a nice, simple, kind of classic style switch gear. Uh, everything's plastic though. And yeah, so far, so good. So this bike has only recently come to New Zealand. Uh, it was launched late last year in Thailand, I believe. Um, and yeah, it's quite a departure from your typical Royal Enfields, which are a lot more relaxed. Um, I think this is the only bike in the Enfield range to have 17 inch rims front and rear. Um, so it's meant to be sort of a nimble around town bike. Um, we'll see how it goes in the twisties. We're just gonna do a quick lap of Lake Carapero, hopefully get some pictures. Oh, look at that. So yeah, a tree fell on that. <laughs> Oh, carnage. This is two weeks, two, three weeks after the cyclone and they're still tidying up trees. And there were some big, big trees that came down. <laughs> so, back to the infield. Not the most powerful bike in the world. You got around 24 horsepower, I think. I'll put the actual specs up here for you. But it shifts quite nicely. So, five speed gearbox, just like the Classic 350. Apparently, I have heard this cruises quite nicely at 120 kilometers an hour, which definitely couldn't do on the Classic. Um, one no thing I've noticed quite quickly on this is the mirrors. They really do shake about a lot. You can. Like they're usable, just, but there is a lot of movement in these mirrors. Sounds quite good though for a little single cylinder engine. Go. Zero to 100 and eventually. It's definitely not a traffic like drag race of this bike. But it is quite cool. I do like it. So, sitting at 100 kilometers an hour. No unwanted vibrations that I can feel. Feels nice and comfy. Get myself all pushed. Uh, legs are at about a 90 degree angle. 
and you got some nice cutouts here in the tank for your knees to latch onto. So if I owned this bike I would tweak the clutch position here, just tilt it down slightly. It's sitting a bit higher than I'd like. Uh, but since it's not my bike, I'm not going to bother with that. But you can literally just touch it. Touch that clutch lever and you can just start to disengage the clutch. The grips are quite chunky actually as well. They're that sort of classic style. Kind of makes it feel like the bike's a bit bigger than it is. Like you're holding on to a decent meaty grip there. But then you twist said grip and basically nothing happens. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to move that camera up because it's going to break. And let that Tesla pass. Seriously, is it like illegal to own a Tesla and not have a personalised number plate? I swear, every single one of them has a personalised plate. Been trying really hard to get different camera angles and stuff, and all the products I'm using turn out to be absolute trash. Might have to actually invest in a new GoPro grip, grip amount. Alright. So I quite like Enfield's uh, clock here, so it's nice and simple, you don't need to know revs on a bike like this, let's face it. You've got your standard stuff, trip meter, odometer, trip meter B, a clock and a gear position indicator as well as a fuel gauge. It's, it's showing you everything you need, uh, plus you've got your, your usual idiot lights. So it's pretty comprehensive and stylish little dash there I think. In general I quite like the rider ergonomics in the cockpit area of this bike. It's nothing too aggressive but it's pretty roomy and comfy. Now I have been told to be a bit wary of the tyres on this. The CEAT tyres that Enfield supply these with, apparently a whole lot of journos at the Thailand launch managed to crash this on a go-kart course um, by putting too much faith in the tyres, but so far so good, it's not like I'm going particularly quick or anything. It's kind of a bit like a lovable puppy this bike. <laughs> it's just eager to please, but it doesn't quite have the beans to go flat out. Saying that, it's gone quicker than this Toyota Fortuna, so... Yeah, just looking down at the front brake area there. The brake hose and ABS sensor line sort of stick out a fair bit there. You think those would be mounted towards the uh, front fork there or something. It's got quite a nice exhaust note this engine as well. I'm trying to remember if the classic, six, uh, the classic 350 sounded um, quite like this. It's got kind of a cool little exhaust pipe too. I think I might pull over and let this Toyota get a bit of distance ahead of me before it bores me to death. Well, Enfield's got not quite enough power to pass it. Not on these roads anyway. Hopefully that's enough time for the Toyota to have at least gotten a couple of corners ahead. Let's see how long it takes us to catch them, eh?
definitely notice a bit of a kick, like a bit more gusto when you change gears on this thing. At least at lower speeds. Too bad. Got to remind myself the spike's got less than 200 k's on it still. The first gear tops out at 50. Second gear, 70. Third gear, see what it tops out at. Third gear's a nice long one. Third gear's 60 miles an hour, about 98 kilometers an hour. And I'm in fourth gear doing 100k now. And fifth is kind of a cruisy overdrive. feet on the right there when I was going into that corner. I did feel myself essentially checking my heel on the exhaust pipe the way it sweeps up. Not too sure if I like that or not. There was a dog on that motorcycle. <laughs> Mirrors are a little bit better at lower speeds but still, as soon as the road gets even vaguely bumpy, they start shaking away, making it hard to see out of them. I wonder if that's because they're on these just long little stalks. All right. Now, usually I take photos down there, but I don't think I will today. this into town since it's definitely giving me town bike vibes. I think kind of want to try and do some sort of longer shot. Not time lapse shots but uh, you get a bit of a blur in some photos. over here. Alright, little infield. Oh. This might work as a nice place. Filthy mongrels rubbish down there. Lovely. Hopefully we can hide that in the photo. Right, so written what, 25k or so? And yeah, definitely a learner bike I'd say. I did probably if you're doing open road riding on this thing, uh, I think you'd find its power tiresome. But yeah, this is what I mean about the exhaust. It's a great looking little exhaust there, but as soon as you put your, the balls of your feet here, if you're going to do a, say, a tight right-hander, I found my heel hitting down there quite quickly, which is a little bit distracting. Uh, you can change the preload on the rear shocks and looking at this that is set to about as soft as it goes so I might bust out my C-spanner um, before I ride this again 
take it home, uh, crank up the preload on the rear a little bit and see if that uh, improves things somewhat. But I do love the styling on this bike. I think Royal Enfield's nailed it. It just looks cool. And it comes in a variety of colours, like Royal Enfield likes to do. They like to give you plenty of options. And, yeah, it looks very nice. Very easy to touch the ground. I haven't actually mentioned seat height, because I haven't even read about what it is. But I can very easily touch the ground on this. I weigh, not weigh, <laughs> my height is what, 175, 176 centimetres? Nice! That is a rather good looking little motorcycle.